Brandon Miller looks up to Paul George. Was there like a specific moment or play in P's career that made you a fan or like what 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 kind of brought you to become a fan? He has talked about it on numerous occasions. So in today's video, I want to discuss what Paul does so well on the court that has earned him his GOAT status by many young kids today and also see if Brandon Miller can close that gap on his own GOAT. And there's no better place to start than hearing it from the man himself, PG, on his own podcast. Let's take a look. I wanted to let my legacy to be you know, when legacy? I'm retired is you know, P played his hardest on both ends and was special on both ends. Both ends. And, you know, I want the, the next generation to be able to see like, oh, okay, I can handle at 6'9". Uh, we're going to talk about that. I can be a, a, a deadly shooter, deadly shooter at 6'9". I can get to smaller, get to smaller we'll talk about tight that. spaces at 6'9". Tight nine. space at 6'9". It's okay to defend at a high level. Defense it's okay to, you know, be get embarrassed on it defense. It happens. Um, by a, a, a gifted offensive player. Like, that's natural. That yeah, it happens. Game. That's how I, I, I viewed it from Kobe. So the you know, my legacy is Mamba. Just, um, um, for the big wings to be able to do everything on the floor. You know, we gonna and, get and into this man. Impactful. We gonna get into I this. I like, thought that like, oh. All right, let's talk about handles. Get over here, get over here. Okay. I could talk about them going one-on-one -on -one like AI, but I'd rather talk about them using their handles in pick and roll situations. So much of today's basketball is get to a pick, and take advantage of the big man. And Paul is excellent at this. He can come off a screen from his big man and mix you up a little bit, then get to the basket for a tough lay at the rim. Or he can reject the ball screen and mix you up again and get to the bucket as well. Handles are so key because it creates indecision, especially since Paul has shown the ability to hit the three right after the pick is set. Now that he hit those threes, he can start going into his bag and hit you with some of that pitter patter that hit you with a step back. I can tell that Brandon's been studying PG. He eats up that mid-range game really well, and he also has the ability to get to the basket and finish amongst the trees. And if he gets that switch onto a big man, he has the ability to cook you. So big man, you better be ready to move those feet. Yabba dabba do. Gets it. Back screen. Comes off the pin down from Zoo. You get the step up. Look at this. Handles, handles, uh. Get to this package, uh-huh. Cross, cross, uh-huh. Get to the bucket. And then use that length to get to the basket. I like that. See, this is where I feel like the handles come into play. And then I like to talk about it here. This is after the screen is set. And then he drives to the basket and then gets the, uh, the running hook off the glass. I think that he has a lasting effect, but the silky smooth way he's able to get to the basket after coming off pick and roll situations, the screen from his big man. Hey, if there's anyone that you know that wants to level up their game, book a coaching call with me. Hit my stand store, link is in the description below. Now let's get back to the content. All right, on to point number two, being a deadly shooter. Not a lethal shooter, one of DC's finest right there. Shout out to him, always hitting buckets. I gotta have him on the channel sometime. All right, but back to PG and Brandon Miller. Being a shooter is definitely where I feel that the Brandon is gonna be able to close the gap a little bit. As a rookie, he's shooting 37% from the three point line. That's pretty good coming in to the league. He's taking about three to six shots per game. While Paul as a rookie on the other hand is about 29% from the three point line when he came into the league and he was shooting around the same amount per game. But I was there when PG was a rookie. There were totally different circumstances. Paul didn't have the keys to the kingdom as yet. He was still working his way up. But as of Paul's 2024 NBA season, he's shooting around 38% from the three point line. Next up is scoring in tight spaces at 6'9". How I want to get into this this is talk about how Paul moves so well without the ball and his ability to cut. Paul can start off making his way to the ball for a handoff and then cut back door. Most of the time, the weak side defense isn't aware or they're at least a step behind. Defense today is so bad. I've talked about it on other videos on the channel. P will receive the, the ball late at the basket and have to score and make some real tough finishes in, in those tight spaces right there around the rim. And that was something I sniffed out early back in the day when PG and myself played together with the Pacers. He always had a knack for knowing when to cut to the basket. 
Most people looked at his frame and thought that I could body him up and be physical, get him off his, his spot. He's not gonna do anything. But that was where he was able to use his quickness and leaping ability to finish at the rim. Most of the time it was above the rim, at least when it came to playing with me because I was a hell of a passer. Cuts back door, oh, nice cut back door. Take his time, then take a bad shot. Look, ball's being advanced. Russell catches at the block. He's working his way up, cuts back door. The defense is nowhere to be sighted. This is what I'm talking about with the small spaces right there. Boom. Those tiny spaces at the opposite side of the rim. Another one. Paul bringing the ball down. He gets the screen, works his way up. Oh, playing without the ball. A oh, tough finish. That is what I was talking about when I heard P talk about those being able to score in tight spots. But I think Brandon Miller is right there as well. He can catch a lob in the half court basically like twice a game because of defense, just ball washing. On our Pacer teams back in the day, if we was giving up lobs in the half court defensive set, that shit was unacceptable. You hear about that in practice the next day or in the locker room or on the bench. But what I see he does comparable to PG is that he shows poise and patience if it isn't a clean catch for a lob dunk. When that defense collapses, he, he isn't rushing to get a shot up quickly and missing those chippies around the rim. He's taking his time, making sure he gets that bucket. I gotta give respect to a rookie like that to come in and have poise, like, you know, to be able to finish like that in the rim. I definitely wasn't doing that. This is new day and age where these young fellas are coming in, getting it done. Now, when it comes to defense, there's a bit of a gap there to me, to be honest. No way, shape, or form am I saying that Brandon Miller isn't a good defender. All I'm saying that there is room to grow. He does a good job of squaring up on his opponent, attempting to stay in front. You know, he shows his hands. He gives enough space to contain, and, and he always gives up a good contest. But when you look at Paul defending, he closes that space. He's willing to test those handles, try to poke at the ball hunting for steals so you can't have any lazy dribbles around him at all or it's you're going to be on the other way going down and that impacts the flow of offensive players rhythms Luca likes to lull you to sleep a little bit have a couple setup dribbles before he shoots the ball he came into the league and onto a team where Danny Granger Mike Dunleavy and Troy Murphy were the go-to guys on offense so Paul had to make his bones on the defensive end first and then work his way up to being the go-to guy on offense and when we made our run those Pacer teams back in the day he had to guard four of the toughest ISO players in a row sometimes It'd be like Joe Johnson, Carmelo Anthony of the Knicks, man. He was like scoring champion. He was getting it done. D. Wade and, and LeBron James, he took those two challenges on all the time. And my man's never complained about it. Series after series, night after night, he never asked for a switch. With names like those, sometimes you're bound to get embarrassed from time to time. But you learn a lot and you grow from those experiences right there. And it makes you a better defender. And I think that's where P has really laid his mark on being able to play on both sides sides of the court. Brandon closes out on Russell, gives him some good space, and then sizes him up, and then look, doesn't, oh, you see that? That's what, it's like, that is the thing I'm saying, like, where he has room to grow. He's on, he's on, he gives him his space. Look at all this space right here. And there he's like that, all right, that's cool. Russell doesn't shoot the ball real well, and now he goes into his package. You know he likes to drive to the basket. Look, he doesn't take, he doesn't cut him off. He just lets Russell get to where he wants to. Russell missed that dunk. If this was Russell like five, six years ago, Russell would have finished that for sure. But like, that's the small details right there. That's the thing I'm saying that it leaves a lot to be desired. Look at this, Brandon Miller closes out. He's space, look, he always gives good space, but look at this, he's just retreating so much. And I feel like DeMar missed that shot more so than Brandon Miller actually defended that and made him miss the shot. Let me know if I'm wrong right there, but I feel like he's just giving up too much space. All right, we have Celtics versus Hornets. Jason Tatum is bringing the ball down the court. Look at this, good stance, low stance. Brandon has a low stance, doesn't use his hands. Look at this, and he just gets blown by. Tatum has a two-handed slam where Russell Westbrook missed that dunk earlier on. A younger player is taking the space. Look at this, boom. Boom, he's crossing, crossing, sizing him up, 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 sizing him up. Sizing him up. And he just, he doesn't cut him off. He just, just, like it's not bad, but it's just like, it has room to grow. 
But now, I don't know what the future holds for Brandon. I hope that he stays injury free and the Hornets build around him and LaMelo Ball. He's well on his way to closing that gap, to be honest with you. He may even have a head start, but young fella, keep fine tuning that on ball defense. I want to see you get those assist numbers up. Paul was a great passer. I definitely got some easy buckets at the rim. But lastly, you know, get some playoff series wins, you know, under your belt, and you're gonna be able to close that gap on your GOAT. Drop a comment below so you let me know what player or topic you want me to cover next. But thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want to catch more insight into the game, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you never miss an upload. Keep shooting. No layups, hard foul.